This is a video that should have been made a really long time ago, but I'm finally doing a full review of this game. Octopath Traveler is a game with a very unique art style, but is that all it is? Or is this game the best JRPG on Switch? Let's find out. For the sake of avoiding spoilers, most of the gameplay you're going to be seeing throughout this review will take place during Chapter 1 of Orphelia's Story. Now, first off, the game is beautiful and it's easily the first thing you'll notice when getting first into it. The 2D HD look it has is really cool and honestly makes me wish some old school RPGs could be remade with this engine. Could you imagine playing something like, say, I don't know, Chrono Trigger on this engine, or maybe Final Fantasy VI? It would be amazing! The game's environments are all interesting and particularly I think the snow areas really stand out. I think it's weird that some people thought that the graphics were enough to make the $60 price tag too high just because it's like kind of 16-bit inspired. Especially when you see some of the effects going on that would never would have been possible on your typical 16-bit RPG. I'm not an expert on the technical aspects of games by any means, so if you want a much better understanding of how impressive the art style for this game is, I highly recommend you just check out the video from Digital Foundry. They made a pretty good in-depth video on kind of the effects and you know all those things going on in the background for Octopath Traveler. And chances are you probably already know about them, these guys are experts on this type of thing. When you first start up Octopath Traveler, you'll have your choice between 8 different characters, each with their own story to experience and go through. Regardless on who you start the game with, you'll be able to pick up every other character, so regardless, you can still experience all the different stories, which is great. I really like that. Each character excels at different things. For example, Cyrus is your typical mage, Obrick is your tank, and Ophelia is your basic healer. Every character also has their own path actions. Path actions are basically these simple abilities that allow each person to interact with the overworld in some way. Ophelia, for example, is able to guide people, basically making them follow her and maybe even join a battle, which kind of seems random sometimes when you bring in a grandma or you know someone random like that, which I think is pretty hilarious. Other characters can choose to fight, buy items, steal, and really do a ton of things generally. Typically, you use these path actions to solve side quests, and while that is pretty cool, the way side quests are handled is kind of annoying in this game. There's very little direction. A side quest will, at most, tell you a situation, and that's kind of it. You have no idea what action to use, where to go, who to talk to, or anything. You usually have to figure it out for yourself, and while that is sometimes fun in some kind of capacity for some games, it just isn't fun in Octopath. And I'll explain to you why. Let's compare how Breath of the Wild handles this and how Octopath Traveler handles this. The reason why it works in Breath of the Wild is because there are tons of different ways on how to solve a side quest or how to get the small objective that you need to get completed done. In Octopath, however, there's at most maybe one or two specific ways on how to handle a situation and sometimes there's just one way and that's it. One way or no way to complete this quest. For this reason, Breath of the Wild rewards figuring out your own solution, while Octopath generally just stays vague and just kinda hopes you figure out the very specific preset solution. Which only really makes it annoying to deal with with how vague it is in the beginning. Imagine going up to a side quest and just sort of, you know, hearing a random situation, but even though the situation's so random and it's so vague, you have to figure out a very specific way of how to handle it. It's just annoying to deal with and that's kind of just it. I honestly found myself just ignoring side quests as a whole unless I was able to figure out the solution on the spot. Moving on to how the game as a whole sounds, the voice acting, music, and sound effects are all top notch, with maybe the voice acting being the lowest of the three mentioned. The voice acting is by no means bad. Every voice actor for the most part gives a very solid performance, but that's really it. I've yet to hear a voice line that made me really connect emotionally with the characters in any deep level. However, none of them are really terrible in any fashion. None of them really hit a level of terrible voice acting like you would see in Xenoblade Chronicles 2, for example. In fact, it's pretty consistent in quality and stays being overall decent. Father? Are you alright, Your Excellency? <coughs> it's nothing to worry yourselves over. Just my ears announcing their advance. I do have one issue with how the voice acting was overall handled, however. I've seen other people bring it up, and I agree to an extent, and that's how little they actually feature voice acting in the game. 
Personally, I understand why the characters during side quests aren't fully voice acted, but what's weird is that when party members speak to each other during their travel banter, they aren't voice acted and even during some moments in their actual stories aren't voice acted either. Why? These are the main characters of the game in the middle of their main plot lines. Why wouldn't you have them talk? Especially when they are talking to each other. I don't understand the decision behind that, personally. The music and sound effects in the game sound really nice as well. I don't think I'll find any of the music in Octopath to be memorable per se, but playing the game, they are very well made and I find myself humming along with them while playing. I don't see myself humming to the music though when not playing the game. As I don't actively try to listen to the soundtrack at all, I do really like the sound effects. They just have a satisfying sound to me. It's hard to explain, but every time I have done a spell attack with Cyrus, for example, I love just listening to him yell out his voice line and hearing the attack commence. Especially his ice attack. The way it just sounds shattering is just really fucking satisfying. I will say that the combat system in Octopath Traveler is overall pretty good. It's based on your typical turn-based RPG combat, but it does have its own unique spin to it with the battle points mechanic. Essentially, you get battle points after every turn and you can use them to either attack multiple times in a single turn or to make your magical abilities much stronger. You also have these little boxes under enemies that tells you the number of weaknesses the enemy has and a small little shield symbol that tells you how many more times they can be hit by their weaknesses until they hit the break status. And the break status just basically means they won't be able to attack for a turn and they are more open to damage. Pretty much making it the perfect time to do as much damage as you can possibly do. They're completely open to attack. The combat system sounds simple, but as you get farther into the game, the bosses begin to sort of mess with it a little bit, and it keeps you on your toes. Some bosses will increase the number of hits before a break, and some will completely remove some weaknesses they have for a few turns anyways. It rewards having a team that's varied in many different types of attacks, and I really like that. It's always good to have a combat system that keeps you on your toes. I will warn that the game doesn't really increase steadily in difficulty. I mean, it's not really all that bad, but I feel that it's worth mentioning just in case you're interested in the game in any way. Once you hit chapter 3, there's a pretty noticeable big difficulty spike, and it could be pretty frustrating if you aren't careful. For the most part, I've been pretty positive on the game so far in this review, but it's about to take a turn towards negative. Story-wise, the game just is not interesting to me. Now, I do need to make this pretty clear. Despite playing this game as much as I had the time to, as of the time of this recording, I have not fully beaten Octopath Traveler yet. And I have a reason for this. You see, when I first started this game, I was fully into the game and was going through it relatively quickly. As I played more and more of it, however, I began to lose the motivation to play it and it has a lot to do with just how uninteresting the story is. And also how repetitive the game is as a whole. A lot of my enjoyment of Octopath Traveler has to do with its presentation, art style, music, and sound. And while they're all good, I just can't get the motivation to pick up the game anymore. It's really weird, but when I was first playing this game, I was convinced that it was probably the best game I've played this year, but after a while, I just don't think that's the case anymore. Every party member's chapter is essentially framed in the exact same way. First, a character reaches a destination, they come across another character of some sort, a random problem in town arises, you solve it, and then you somehow discover the next destination, with a farewell being given by any friendly characters you may have came across in town. Nearly every single party member follows this general roadmap for every chapter. You can find a few that's slightly different, but that's for the most part basically it. And having to go through this so many times with a story that only gets at most slightly interesting is mind numbing. It heavily impacted my enjoyment of this game. Now. I did want to address something. I've seen some people mention that the reason why Octopath Traveler's story wasn't interesting, to them anyways, was due to the story lacking any large scale problem that would require all of the party members to band together. Personally, I disagree. I think there's a certain level of charm to having a bunch of characters simply living their life without having some sort of world ending event going on. 
especially with how often games have something like that going on, the problem isn't the lack of a world ending event. The problem is none of the personal stories of these characters are varied in any way. Keep in mind that most of the characters follow a similar formula. If the structure of these stories were far more varied, I probably would have enjoyed them a lot more than I currently do. Overall, I think Octopath Traveler is a very well made game with a lot of glaring flaws. The flaws it does have aren't immediately noticeable, but my god did they hit me hard when they came up. I thought this game had the possibility of being one of the best games to release this year at first, but instead it quickly devolved into a generally well made RPG that doesn't quite hit the mark of excellence. Around the same time of this game's release, I saw some people praising it as the Switch's new number one JRPG that put Xenoblade Chronicles 2 in the garbage bin. To me, this isn't even close, and I still view Xenoblade as the number one JRPG on the console. The games are massively different and honestly shouldn't even be compared in the first place, but even then I preferred playing Xenoblade. Octopath Traveler was an example of a game that I was so hyped by, expecting a masterful RPG and instead got a pretty good run-of-the-mill RPG instead. It's by no means bad, but it simply isn't the best JRPG the Switch has to offer, like some people had said. It boasts a beautiful art style, good music, decent voice acting, and a fun combat system while suffering from extreme repetition and an uninteresting story. I give Octopath Traveler an 8 out of 10. It's a solid game and I can only recommend Octopath Traveler if you believe the things that bothered me a ton wouldn't bother you at all. If you think repetition isn't as big of a negative as it was to me, then I think you'll enjoy this game more than I did. And that's the end of the video guys, thanks so much for watching, I gotta apologize for taking so long in making this review. A game with this length tied to having a job outside of YouTube and being a channel not big enough to get review copies just yet makes it pretty fucking difficult for me to get a review like this out at a relevant time. I also spent some time upgrading some of my equipment. All videos before this one, I just casually used the same headset I would use for listening to music on my PC or talking over Xbox Live and PlayStation Network. But recently I picked up a Blue Yeti for this video and all future videos as well. Hopefully the sound quality sounds better to you guys. I also spent some time getting this caricature you, you saw on screen on this video and changing the general look of the channel. So I hope you like the changes. Again, thanks for watching. Let me know what you think about Octopath Traveler in the comments down below. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys in the next video.